Hi, it's Karen Smith with debriding around a callus on the plantar aspect of a foot of a diabetic patient. And so we can see that in this particular wound that often you will see a callus formation and diabetic feet uh, a lot of times don't have a lot of sensation and feeling but you need to be able to make sure that your patient is comfortable and um, address their pain prior to any type of sharp debridement. And in this particular wound, uh, the callus formation will actually increase the amount of pressure on the foot. So in addition to debridement and good wound care, uh, plan of care, part of that will also be some type of pressure relief in regards to footwear. So whether your patient is having a total contact cast applied today, um, perhaps they're having uh, a dressing that is applied that requires them to be non-weight bearing, then they might need an assistive device. Um, if they are allowed to weight bear, but you want the particular wound area to be non-weight bearing, then you can customize a pressure relief walker shoe or boot um, in order to take the pressure off of this particular area. And so the devices that we have to pick from today are going to be the um, ten, number 10 blade, which has a, a larger uh, blade area. Sometimes I will use an 11 blade, which is appropriate for shaving of a uh, calloused area a 15 blade which is appropriate but you've got to be willing to be patient because it's such a small blade area. I also have uh, the pickups and a pair of scissors if necessary. So in doing this I'll take my 11 blade in this particular example we're going to use oranges but if we're looking just right at um, the diabetic foot ulcer, then you are going to tangentially shave. So you're going to be in the line parallel to the structure that you're shaving. And this one, you can tell that the foot is a mobile part of the body. So the patient uh, needs to be extremely comfortable. You may be able to have them on their back. Um, in supine, but it may be more appropriate for them to be in side lying. Some patients can lay comfortably in prone, um, but typically side lying is a great position for this. But you want to be able to have access that you're comfortably moving in this direction. And so you, you're going to have to stabilize the foot. So typically you may have one hand on the foot and one hand shaving and as you're tangentially shaving that you've got these small pieces that are being removed and you can tell that you're getting these different layers and so you may shave tangentially all around the wound to get it down to a flat area for example. I think it can be shown uh, quite well on the orange example to where you can practice on it. So let's do a little bit of that and see if we can get um, some good practice. And so we'll have this orange as our diabetic foot ulcer and you're shaving. So you can practice kind of like a golf swing by shaving tangentially in the air to make sure you have the right angle and then you're going to shave. I want to show you how thin, very translucent thin, um, that you are shaving. You can always shave more in your next stroke but you can't shave less and once you have shaved deep and caused bleeding then you've got to stop what you're doing and uh, get the hemostasis under control. So 
you can shave that piece is a little thicker so if you get one a little bit thicker then you have an option of coming in with your pickups and trimming that section so that you don't continue to go at that deeper level and then you can come back if you hit at an angle I'm going to do it at an angle so you can see if you hit at an angle then you're going to cut deeper and you're going to cut more of a wedge as compared to a tangential shape shaping type scrape so you can do very quick and you can get your work done without having to go deep and causing uh, more of a cut. You're only trying to get callus off. There should be absolutely no bleeding if you're sticking to the calloused area. So that would be how to shave and you can practice that on your oranges. I can turn the orange over and show you that this orange has septums that look similar to fascia. These orange pieces look a lot like muscle tissue. Um, it's crushable, it's juicy, um, it will easily bleed if you injure it. Um, very vascular. And then you have these very coarse fascial type divisions that surround each muscle. If you are needing to remove fascia, Number one, I speak with the physician first to let them know that I'm going through fascia to a muscle layer and that it, it is necrotic. Um, the other is that muscle is very terrible. You can tear it and rip it very easily. That's one of the ways that you can tell that something is muscle versus if it is a fascial layer, it's very tough you can pretty much, you can lift the orange by the fascial layer. So those are some tips that are uh, just like human flesh. Granulation tissue is made out of a ground substance matrix and also small capillary loops. And in those capillaries is where we have our blood. And so if you rake your pickups over the capillary loops, the granulation tissue, they will bleed and so if they're extra bleedy uh, very quickly then a lot of times we'll say they're friable which could be a sign of inflammation or infection. This particular orange has a thick eschar necrotic area and as I try to get underneath it I just can't do it. It is very hard. It's a little softer in the center. It's kind of hard on the edges. Um, a great tip for this particular type of escar is to, you, if you have time on your side, you can use a few days to put a little bit of um, moisture, hydrogel, on the wound. Then um, a all-inclusive dressing an occlusive dressing and let that soften okay because if it is hard as a rock then it's going to be hard to cut through and when you go through the hard resistance of the escar and get into the underneath tissue that is deeper and is intact and healthy tissue you could easily have your blood you're pushing hard through the hard stuff and then when you get to the soft stuff you just keep pushing and you can have bleeding and you'll never be able to see where it's from. So for that reason I like to have the escar a little bit hydrated um, before I go and start doing a cross hatch. Let's take a 15 blade, okay? So for a cross hatch you're going to go through the escar and you're you can always make a light cut and come back and make a heavier cut in the same spot. 
how big do you make the cross hatches? It really depends on the particular wound. And so if you have a very large area, sometimes we'll make larger cross hatches, but the cross part is when you come back and go horizontal to the vertical that you just cut. Just the fact that you did made those cuts, you should be able to see down into the good tissue underneath. And you can imagine if I slather that with a Vaseline type product, which is the collagenase Santil, the enzymatic debrider, that it would make it all the way to the good tissue and be able to lift. It lifts up the necrotic tissue and allows it to separate. Sometimes if you cross hatched it quite a bit and it's loose underneath, you may be able to come in. and debride out a section. It may be asking a lot. You can see you might be able to get in and start tangentially. When I, As soon as I started tangentially moving that, I got this area and I removed a section. I will tell you that when I am culturing for infection underneath a necrotic area, I do cut a window. You have to do your wound cultures in viable tissue. You're not culturing necrotic tissue, not culturing the drainage or the exudate in the wound. You're actually culturing good tissue. And so I will take a culture swab, press into the good tissue, press a, a little bit, and twirl it to allow my swab to get some good tissue um, fluid on it and get my swab. Now I can tell that this particular eschar, it actually goes deeper than the window I cut. So I would have to make a judgment as to if that was a viable spot for me to be able to culture if it just looks like it is more um, necrotic tissue in that wound then that is, that's not a viable spot for a culture. Sometimes I can go to a wound edge. And take my swab from a good part of a comma underneath and get a wound edge because I'm looking for viable tissue there.